Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome into the Crypto Logic Podcast. Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we haven't seen you guys. I feel like in what, yeah. like four days, but it feels like forever. You know, with us doing a show every single day, taking two days off was kind of like I felt weird. Did you feel weird? Yeah. It, it felt different. It, yeah, it felt like, damn, I need to do something. And I knew it was like we needed to do the show, but like, I don't know, man. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm glad to be back, man. I'm glad to be back. You sound better because I got new headphones for Christmas. Yeah, I'm peeping Sweet. those headphones out. You sound clear. Yeah, next year we're gonna have the new mic, wow. new all yeah. of that kind of stuff, man. So hey, they're it's coming be, in the mail. Gonna be pretty exciting. We're trying to level this uh, this whole podcast up. We recently got Someone the. Got uh, the new logo designs uh, done as well. Got the graphics for uh, our banners. Um, we're going to be redesigning the show. So it's it's going to be pretty dope, man. We're really excited for uh, all the new things to come. So hopefully you guys uh, are too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be having some merch yeah. uh, coming out soon as well. So definitely stay, look, uh, stay tuned for that. But the difference between our merch, I feel like, uh, is we're only doing limited uh like limited um edition portions like say for instance like one design will only be like a hundred of those or 50 of those you know what i'm saying we don't want to have a just endless cycle of stuff you know what i mean we want to continue to innovate with uh our different uh you know designs and stuff like that so yeah. it's gonna be pretty dope man i I'm, I'm really i'm really truly truly honestly excited for next year um this year we've grown a lot man i mean you look at our subscribers from when we started to the subscribers we have now. The community. It's like night and day, man. Look at the community. The community has grown, too. <clears throat> yeah. Our Discord is over 500 people. Um, and they're like loyal, it's legit people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like people just looking for 1,000 Xs and 100,000 Xs. Like, they're really, truly jazzing with the community and the channel. And, um, you know, that's that, those are the type of subscribers that we want. We could do those videos, the clickbait ones. Oh, what's the next thousand next? Blah blah blah. We can grow from two thousand to ten thousand, twenty thousand, hundred thousand. But that's not our goal here, guys. So, uh, if you really want to rock with the campaign, man, get down with the with the nitty gritty and have a real understanding of what crypto is and how it can balance and influence your life. You gotta subscribe to the channel, man, because that's what we're doing all this year and even more so next year. So, super dope, man. Um, Exciting. Hell yeah, man. Let's dive into the market and see what we're doing, see what we're looking at today. Now, the market's sitting at $2.42 trillion, up almost 2% on the day, man. Glad to see Bitcoin finally over that $50,000 mark, hitting that 51000 Ethereum was at about 4100 just a couple of seconds ago. Um, looks like it's trending at that point anyway. But good to see Ethereum back over 4000 man. I, I was kind of a little, you know, shaky for a little bit. When Ethereum kept kind of falling, man, but uh, but I'm glad to see Ethereum, you know, at that at that four four thousand dollar range. It's uh, it's good to see. Um, Binance, you know, as uh, it's been consolidating lately, but uh, you know, it's 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 trending in the right direction. I you know the the last last time we spoke on the last episode, I think we talked about um, you know, how the top top ten changed from 2017. In your opinion, John, do you think that Binance will be as high? Uh, come you know next year 2022 yes with binance or do you think it'll kind of fall to like maybe four maybe five or do you think it'll i think three? i mean that, i think binance will easily double i think binance could double <clears throat> in market cap too hit about 200 billion okay but i think that um there's i believe there'll be other like avalanche and luna will creep their way up yeah into the top like six five I mean, they're basically um, right there. Yeah. You know, 9, 10, 11. I, I, mean, I could see, like, I know Terra doesn't really count because it's not a crypto. It's, I mean, it is, but you know what I mean? It's a stable coin. But the reason yeah. why, I mean, they're, they, they're, they're, they control their supply. They're, you, they're, you mean Tether? Tether, yeah. What did I say? Terra. <laughs> oh, it's not, 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 not Luna. Tether. I meant to say yeah, Tether. Yeah, Tether, Tether. Tether is not, you know, and USDC, they're not obviously cryptos. They're not, like, they're, I know for a fact, Tether, they, are manipulating their supply they're adding more and stuff like that so right. their market cap is going to just grow with with more people on boarding and onboarding on a crypto using stable coins yeah but taking them out i think solana is gonna gonna hit you know at least 800 to 1200 in 2022 
as well as Luna and, and, and Avalanche. Look at Polkadot. Polkadot's in the top 10. Yeah. God, it's crazy. And then right there, see, and go down. They're all, look, yeah, and then Polygon's right there. Polygon's right there about to pass Sheep. It's like right there. And then eventually it'll pass um, Dogecoin. But um, those three, out of those three, I believe Avalanche can crack the top six, top five. And mm. I think Binance could double, though. I, I believe Binance can double. Binance is one of the originals. It's been there for, you know, five, six years plus. Yeah. I think Binance can easily hit a thousand, easily be 200 billion. And then, you know what I mean? We'll, that's that's the thing. Once Bitcoin pulls away, it hits, you know, 1.5 trillion, 2 trillion. Ethereum enters a trillion, right? Yeah. What else can keep up with them? Will Binance be able to keep up 200 billion? Will Solana just get to 300, 400 billion and leapfrog Binance? You know, can XRP, you know what I mean, get 200, 300 billion dollars flown thrown into it? Yeah. In regards of, of its <clears throat> utility and everything, right? And the lawsuit being over and all you, that. Yeah. That's what you gotta we gotta look at. We gotta look at Bitcoin and Ethereum being the first. They're gonna be the first two to pull away. They're gonna pull away. Who else is gonna keep up? And I think Binance can do it. I think Binance can keep up and stay in the top three, but you know, Solana's right there, right? Yeah. I, it's like what, 30 billion away? Yeah, pretty and much. And then you got um, and that's where, you know, Solana and 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 uh, not Solana, uh, Avalanche and Luna, Polkadot, they're kind of ways away if you go down. They're like 20 billion, right? Yeah. They're kind of Yeah, 20, 20 30 billion. Yeah, they're kind of but but a lot of money, I think. But I feel like the stable coins, the only reason I, they're in the top 10 is just because people use them that you know what's the market cap it's based it's yeah, ranked by market it's, cap it's, you know that's the only reason i see but like if you if you really took out usdt and usdc technically solana would be fourth yeah you know uh cardano would be fifth xrp would be sixth luna um would be seventh and then polka dot would be eighth uh avalanche would be ninth and then probably dogecoin would be in the top 10 but in reality matic is probably going to jump it soon so there's there's a lot of stuff coming out with Formatic. There's a lot of stuff that has not came out yet for Polkadot um, that's going to be launching in the next year, probably mid-year. Um, What's the overall market cap right now? Crypto uh, the overall crypto 2. market 4? cap, 2.4. Yeah, 2.4. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean. And then did you, did you see that um, Time Wonderland gave you an extra, yeah. uh, like, a uh, percentage APY yeah, I, for, I like, was, Two days. I was in the the Reddit and they posted. <clears throat> Dan Danielle tweeted it's like, "You guys didn't think we we're gonna drop something for Christmas?" <laughs> it was eighty nine thousand percent APY. Ninety one. Like, yeah, it got, saw, it got up like, to ninety one thousand. Yeah, it's back down to six something. That's still good though. Yeah, yeah, it's down to six. Well, I mean, it's it's it the the APY is gonna go up because time is kind of going down in price. Um, that's just kind of how that works, which is kind of interesting to me because. Like with all these new, all the DAOs that came out, all the forks and all of that stuff that happened at the tail end of this year, I think that they will stick around for at least the first quarter of next year. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this, if you got into the DAOs now, yeah. you're kind of going to ride that passive income wave till next year to then you could be able to use the quote unquote free money to buy your cryptos instead of having to, you know, do your job whether it's mcdonald's or you <laughs> yeah. know, whatever you know what i'm saying like i think it's going to be a lot different next year and it's not going to be the same as just like oh buying and selling crypto i think that's going to be it's going to be looked at like a dinosaur age you know if you're going to still be doing the same thing that you did uh, this year your portfolio is technically yeah. really not going to grow well, in, buying in my, crypto? Mm, no no not not necessarily saying just buy just necessarily saying buying and selling that's yeah. it. No, no DeFi, no NFTs, no, no nothing other than just buying and selling. Well, that, yeah, I don't think that it's considered a dinosaur thing. I just it's just considered what type of trader you are. Just like stock markets, you can make more money doing options trading. You can make more money. A lot of people just buy and hold. Yeah, they just buy, buy and then sell, buy and hold. They just trade, swing trade. So I think in crypto, like the art of buying your a crypto project that you like and dollar cost averaging in is just gonna be there forever. It's never gonna not be normal like that's that's the most basic thing you can do in crypto if someone's a crypto investor they don't want to know about DeFi. they don't they're just like hey i want to invest just like stock market hey i want to buy uh amazon stock i want to buy tesla stock you can do option trading you can short it you know what i mean you can uh i forgot the other one is short and um 
What is it? Um, Shorting, and then I have a brain fart right now. No, I know you could short, but I don't. I don't think there's anything other than that. Yeah, there is. Is it? It's 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 shorting, and then something. Leverage trading. Yeah. That's uh, the only other thing that I could think of, but not. When in regards to shorting, I don't know if there's, yeah, another, there's another acronym. Um, squeeze, short squeeze, and then the what's the other one? Reverse is long. Mm. Uh, long position, short position, put. There we go. So you can put buy puts, right? You can do the put put options or sh or short options, short selling or put oh, options. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, I remember okay. I was learning that uh, during the, during the twenty twenty. Like, so I kind of wanted to do it, but it was, it's you buy put options or short selling. <clears throat> so, um, that's the, sh the put is the opposite of short. So you right. like eventually like bet betting it to go long, like bet to go, bet it to bet it to go up. So in crypto, you can do that forever. That's like the most basic thing that you can do. And I think some people will never touch DeFi. So would that be considered like diamond handing in, in the, in the form, form of crypto? In a sense. Yeah. But not like diamond handing, like, oh, I'm diamond. Handing. I just like this project. Whether it goes mm. up or down, I just like like quant. You buy quant, and then you just buy it. You're yeah. not worried about the news. You're not worried. I like quant. I have faith that it's gonna do fine, and you just buy it. And then one day quant hits seven thousand dollars. You you've been buying for hundred dollars, two hundred dollars for the past you know year or two. You have like fifty seven quant tokens, and then it hits seven thousand dollars. You're like, oh, I'm gonna take a little bit out now. Like some people are gonna do that. They're not gonna, yeah. you know, they're not trying to time the market. They're not trying to do this. They're just buying it every week, every month, or whatever. They're just buying their quant token, and they'll never touch DeFi. They'll never care about quant dipping, going up, partnership agreements, none of that. And I think they just buy. That's like the most basic crypto investor there is. There's gonna be people that are looking for the new, you know, chasing green candles. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can get in <clears throat> DeFi. That's fine. But I know some people that will never get in DeFi. They'll just never get into it. They just don't care for it. And that's just that's just part of the game. There's gonna be a, sp a spot for everybody yeah i think and, so and DAOs are just new parts of crypto that's gonna be involved with nfts gaming well DAOs, DAOs are you remember in 2018 when DeFi got created right i feel like in tail in 2020 is when DAOs technically got created i mean when was olympus actually started a year ago like eight months ago nine months ago so, i remember a DAO is so a still decentralized autonomous organization. organization it's not yeah. it's not the DAO is not the protocol right the DAO is the governance board it's just a fund basically it's the governance board of people who vote yeah so it's basically not the protocol that's why i think a lot of people think DAOs are the protocol itself like no the protocol is built on behalf of the DAO so the DAO supports the protocol the DAO basically allows the protocol to make moves right the treasury is what basically what DAOs are are the decentralized versions of um like stockbrokers for like fidelity accounts. Uh um It's just the board of directors. It's yeah, like it's board. basically like that, where you put your money in and they they put whatever money they have stuck uh, uh that's using in their actual protocol or their decentralized application, whatever you want to call it, they take those funds and then they they buy more things that are going to make passive income. Like uh, they buy $400,000 worth of Bitcoin or they buy, you know, $200,000 worth of Ethereum. And then that's how they're able to pay these rebases. Now, the ones that come out that were just like popping up like Christmas candy, the ones that had like millions and millions of APY, those necessarily I don't think will last um, if they don't. You know, they can't they can't continue to pay out that much amount of money. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's too much at that point. That that is just a way to get you to use their protocol. Now, with those, I feel like if you make some money with them, you should pull your profits and put them into different projects that are more sustainable. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's just me. I'm not I'm not trying to tell you how to invest at that. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? There's there's a bunch of them. Um, like Jade, for instance, uh, Jade was was doing really well um, in the beginning of the year, and then now slowly it started to go down. I mean, of course, the market has went down. Fort's but dead. Fort died. Oh, oh, it's it's just bucks. it's just low. Yeah. yeah, Jade is the same way, bro. So I mean, if you got in, if you hold it long enough, you'll make your money back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and no, because I mean, some of them. Eventually you will. Well, I shouldn't say no, right? You you probably Eventually. will because you're going to be getting the continuous rebates and stuff. Hector Dow, a lot of people are making their money back finally. I'm about to break even on Hector Dow. 
Yeah, I mean, a, if you got if, days, if you got into Hector Dow at around the eighty to fifty dollars or whatever, then yeah, you could start making your money back. But imagine the people that got into Hector when it first launched well, at three hundred dollars yeah, per one. But but you know, some people like like some of my family bought Hector Dow. <laughs> I was in Hector. He got in around like 280, 300. He has like 10 now. But remember, it's the same thing as time. The more you have, the more you're earning. Exactly. So he had six. He bought like three or four or five initially. And then now he has double what he had. So he's like, he said he's breaking even now. Yeah. So in the next couple of weeks, he'll start profiting because because Hector's been stabilizing at 70. I'm going to break even in the next couple of days to where... Now I have like three or four, and now I'm breaking even. And on top of that, now I'm gonna, as long as it stays at between sixty and seventy bucks, I'll be profiting in the next like week or so. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna leave it. Then now I'm gonna be profiting. Now I'm gonna just wait because now I'm getting more because I have like two. I think I have two point eight or something like that. I don't care about Docs and Hector Dow because I just bought one a long time ago. Right, right, right. Or, I was in. I was in Hector Dow. And then yeah. now it's starting to accumulate to where I'm like, oh, cool. Like I'm breaking even. And it's just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And then eventually I get to like six, seven, eight in the next, you know, few months. We'll see what happens. Take it out, whatever. If, if Hector Dot goes up to $300 again, then shoot. Yeah. You, you yeah. <laughs> You'll be it sitting pretty. No, I, 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 think, I, it. I think it will go back up to that point just because for the simple fact that it was already there. And Hector Dow literally puts out the like uh, updates like almost I think be fine. every six yeah. hours. So, you know, they're constantly fine. doing something. But. but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Now, now, man, this is this is kind of reaching a little bit. It's kind of reaching a little bit. But Elon Musk, we all dude, know in, in Twitter. It's way too freaking. This dude, he whenever he tweets, we're always like either happy that he tweets or like, dude, really? Why the heck would you say that? Like, and this tweet is one of those things where it's like, got to read between the lines, but I don't know. You guys, you guys be the judge. You let us know what you think. So Elon Musk said, so much of AI is about compressing reality to a to a small vector space, like a video game in reverse. So reading this, first off, you're kind of like, OK, well, what the heck is he talking about? Now, if you know about vector space AI, which is a VXV that we talk about all the time on the channel, you could be like, is that what he's talking about? And you, so in your, reality. in your opinion, John, what, what does this tweet mean to you? He's putting AI, it's the, it's the, it's the smart baskets. The smart baskets. Um, it's the, compressing reality into a small vector space. People are already going crazy. If you look on the tweets, everyone's like, vector space. Vector space pumped from $4 to like almost $6 last night. That's crazy. Show the chart, show the chart. Look, so, at, look at vector space, look at it. I don't know. We don't know. He, he's he's Elon Musk is a genius. All right, he's not an idiot. Look at that six bucks. It was at four dollars yesterday. Four dollars, almost fifty percent. Eight cents off of Elon Musk tweet. Look at that. And he's tweeting a utility token. I don't know if it's actually vector space, but he's he's smart, man. He's a genius. So you can't take it. You know, you can take a grain of salt, but you can't be like, oh, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Like he knows what he's doing. I mean, vector space theoretically would help his and look company. Look what he says. He says, the, "Yeah, the smarter someone is, the harder it is to simulate predictor behavior." That's VXV. That's all VXV, VXV does. VXV is the thing that helps people make better decisions. Yeah, it's, it's it simulates <laughs> and predicts. That's what VXV does. So I don't, he used I don't the know, word, man. He, he did use vector yeah. space. We don't know. That's the thing. He loves to play, but maybe he, I don't know. It's crazy. That's insane. Hmm. And remember, Vector Space is with NASA. Elon Musk has contracts with NASA. I don't know. I mean, I it, know. It, it it makes sense, it's right? So it, crazy. It, it makes sense because Vector Space or VXV would be very helpful for Elon Musk to have that information. The thing is, but I don't, I don't know. The thing is, we will never know. We and won't. That's I'm true. just gonna say he's talking about vector space. <laughs> look at the price. Yeah, he does yeah. it with the dogs all the time. If he can do it with the dogs and the dog coins and people live by it and they go, oh, he talk about this. Then why why would I not do it when it comes to utility token? Right. If they can do it with dogs, I can do it with utility. Screw you guys that are, he talks about Floki. He talks about Dogecoin. Oh, he does literally talk about Dogecoin. He does. Sheep. He'll mention Sheeb. 
And then the sheep army will think they talking about sheep. He's trashing sheep. Yeah, but but he's not. He he never physically says sheep. He only shows his dog, yeah. which is a, technically a sheep. But dog. the next one of his but tweets. Still. One of his tweets before he used Floki. He said Floki pa- Santa or something like that. That's the name of his. Is that, I think is that the name know. of his dog? I don't know the Floki coin blew up, but either way, I if that's the name of his dog. They have their do- dog coins and they get excited for it. We VXV family have. VXV for him to talk about. So hey, enjoy this moment. I think he is talking about VXV, and if he is wrong, if, if if I'm wrong, then whatever. But we'll never know. I don't think he'll ever say, "Oh, you guys, I'm not talking about Vector Space." He'll never say it. Yeah, but, uh, but he'll never say but it. But even if even if he's not talking about Vector Space as it, Vector Space, it, it is. It's open to your own. Per- yeah. per- uh, what is the word? Precipitation. Per- precipitation. Like that, is that yeah. the word? Mm-hmm. It's it's open to your own reality, your own understanding. So. You know how, like, when, when we were yeah, kids, we would we would play that game where you would whisper in someone's ear, whatever it is, and then at the end of it, it will completely change? So, you know, not all people think the same. Like, eventually they'll have the same goal in mind, but everyone's reality be something different. Like, someone will read this and be like, you're not talking about VXV, he's talking about this. And you're like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. You know what I'm saying? Precipitation is freaking water. Like, no, man. not not precipitation. I can't think of the word, man. It's too early. Uh, open to your... Someone will correct me in the comments. I, you guys always do, whether it's roads or... Um, interpretation. Yeah, there we go. Interpretation. Dang it. I couldn't think of that freaking uh, word. Um, but yeah, so some, someone's going to Inter- correct me interpretation into, yeah, in, in the comment section. And and please do. You know what I'm saying? Open please, to your please own do. interpretation. But, uh, I, I didn't I, finish college, so. <laughs> I I think, honestly, it could, it could be open to whatever you think it's going to be, you know? And, and just based off of what uh, VXV is doing, I mean, hey, you know what I'm saying? If, it, if it's bullish He literally VXV, used AI and vector space in the same tweet talking about... How what VXV does, right? Making things smaller into a token, and that token giving you data to make better decisions. Now, I, the thing is about vector space is I wonder how many vector space you have to hold in order to achieve the goal to uh, keep know. your your information. Because I gotta vector, look into that. Vector space only has fifty million tokens, and I mean, in reality, Elon Musk can buy all of those <laughs> by himself. So. Uh, I'm interested to see like what how how much you have to hold in order to continuously keep your information and and keep vector space actually working for your company. So that's going to be pretty interesting to figure out um, once they put out that uh, that verbiage. So um, now this is one of the things that that I that I was contemplating. Didn't we do this tweet already? Oh no, no, different, Dang, same different guy tweet. though. Same guy, different tweet. I love this guy, man. Um, I was I was contemplating this because I did t- a couple of TikToks on it, basically talking about you know how next year will be a little bit different than the year before, but still kind of stay the same in the in the form of of mindset and thinking. But uh, like I told you guys last time, root to to Fi, he's a very good um, he has very good information, and I love all of his tweets. Um, so he said, "Crypto is too big to keep." up to date on everything right our goal on the channel is to is to kind of keep you updated on crypto but you know there's things that we miss of course we're, we're only human man um so crypto is, is starting to get too big to keep up to date with everything right you need to choose your your niche whatever that is for you for example it could be crypto trading could be staking could be yield farming could be nfts could be DeFi, whatever it is Become a master of it. I mean, John, in the beginning of the show, even when we first started, John said, make it a, uh, learn it before it becomes a curriculum. So then you get paid become, to do it. Become an expert before it becomes a curriculum. Exactly. He said it best because he said, it. I, you know, I was, I was, I was, uh, what is that word? That's your, you, comp- no, it's not compartmentalizing. It's like, a, uh, paraphrasing. Sorry. I'm terrible today with, uh, the words. Um, but Yeah. You, 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 You're rusty. It's been a few days. It's been a long time, man. I feel like, what I mean? like four days, but four days out of crypto, you, you, you basically just, you lost. I mean, I wasn't out of crypto. I mean, we, I don't think, no, I mean, I'm not out of it, on but the show, on least. the show, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause on the show, you know, we go over the, yeah, market, we got free money over the weekend. Open Dow, you remember that? Oh, that open Dow yeah, thing. Yeah. Open we did get free money on open that. Dow on but I didn't have day. enough, eat. I didn't have enough eat to pay the gas fees. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I didn't look it. It was like 15 bucks. I haven't put any eat in my metamask in a long time because ever since i got hacked yeah i've stayed away from eth the eth part of my metamask the eth network so yeah. i'm 
I'm still very skeptical about using ETH on my MetaMask unless I'm like a new contract address for it. Ah, I have a new contract address, which I'm going to use. I'm not going to use that one anymore. We'll see. Did you guys get to get in on that uh, OpenDAO? Uh, yeah, that's in the airdrop? comments. If you have bought any NFT on OpenSea, you qualified. Yeah. Uh, that was over the weekend, though, right? But it's trading. No, you can still do it now. Oh, you can? You have until like March or something like that to claim it. Oh. Or June. Or I don't know what day it was. Yeah. Well, I you mean, have a long time. When John, when John told me about it low-key at the first time, I was like, eh, I don't know. Because like Ethereum, they have I a lot like of scams. 5.7 million tokens. So I was like, mm. At the launch of it, it was $60. Now it's worth like 40 bucks. Cause it yeah, dropped it, it dropped it down. But a price, everyone but. took it and, sell, and sold and sells it. Or you just hold it. And then I mean, you, yeah. But but it. It's not something you're going to know. I mean. I would just convert it to ETH. Yeah, just sell it. I mean, uh, if you give the free money, just sell it. You know what I'm saying? But there, excuse me, there's gonna be somebody who buys it, not knowing that you get it for free, or maybe they didn't yeah. buy. Maybe they didn't buy any NFT, so you know they technically have to buy it for the price appreciation. And then you're basically just gonna be the dumping to on the it. The token's dumb. It has a trillion tokens. It's useless. Yeah, that, I don't know. I, it has a I trillion, didn't look at it. it has well, a trillion tokens. What was the ticker op for that? Uh, oh, oh, something. It's open down. Oh, okay. But yeah, um, become a master of whatever it is, right? Uh, whatever that niche is that you want to go into and just stick with that. You will have much better gains than just aping into every single cryptocurrency. That's that's just, it's true. You know what I'm saying? If you if you like gaming, stick to gaming. There's so many gaming tokens. You like Metaverse? Go that's, on to Metaverse. That's just like anything in life. It's like a YouTube channel. It's our YouTube channel. You don't want to be doing everything, a jack of all trades type of channel. You yeah, because you're a master at nothing. You want to be, you want to be, you know, kind of focused on something, and get really good at it, and then expand from there as you dabble on. You don't want to start off, oh, learning like ten things at once, master one thing at a time. So now you're master at this, you can move on and master this, move on and master that, move on and master. You can be a jack of all trades. It's just. Most like a lot of people will start off trying to be good at everything at the first time. Like, no, you master one thing, you know it, and you know it like in the back of your head, you sleep. You don't, there's no reason now it's okay to expand your knowledge and learn something, a new skill, right? It's okay to have multiple skills. I personally have multiple skills, but it's because I make sure that I'm good at something, at least good. At least good to where that's like if you got lost somewhere and you know how to get home with learning language, right? You have a language. I just, all my. If I want to learn a language, I just need to be able to learn a language to where I know how to get home. Ask yeah, for directions, exactly. ask for food, ask for water, right? Ask for a phone. Basic things that can say, hey, if I ever get lost, I have enough language wherever I am, if I'm in France or if I'm in Mexico or somewhere that speaks Spanish only or, you know, Vietnamese, whatever. Enough just to, 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 to ask for the necessities of life. That's being good at it, right? Yeah. So when it comes to skill, if you can just be good at a skill to where you can get paid to do it, where someone can pay you to do it and you're good at it, that's okay to then move on and learn a new skill. But obviously you can do be good, you can be great, you can be excellent. Then you can be a master at it. Yeah. But that's that's what I think. Of like You should start off and just be great at one particular thing, be good at it. Then you can move on and learn other things and dabble out and then and venture off. But don't be, oh, I'm gonna learn this today. Tomorrow I'm gonna do this. Then tomorrow I'm gonna do this. You're not gonna you're not gonna be able to focus and be good at one thing. You're just gonna be half good at everything. Yeah. And then you're not gonna, you know what I mean? Especially in cryptocurrency. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Niche out. Niche. Niche, niche, niche same thing. Tomato, tomato. But I, no, I honestly, man, I think like there's so many people that made a bunch of money in NFTs this year. And then there's the other half of the people that only technically lost money in nfts i'm one of the people who technically lost money with nfts like i've seen i was i was in the beginning in the nft boom when you know nfts was the the thing to do yeah. but i never made <laughs> zero money with it bro i i Same. felt like i had to just diamond hand it and hold it while other people were selling it i was in the discord like oh those people are dumb for selling it for you know just double it's going to be worth this and then yeah. They reveal and then the price tanks. You know what I'm saying? So it's the a game you have to play. The market's still young. Oh yeah, of course, of Cause, course. Because I'm holding like seven NFTs right now. Yeah, and me I'm, too. And me I too. remember in February that was before like NFTs. I learned more about NFTs first before crypto. Like deep diving into crypto, all I had was like I think earlier in the year we had Dogecoin. Yeah. And I remember when NFTs started popping off, and that's when Gary Vee announced, "Hey, I'm going on NFTs. I'll be back in like March or April." And he went and learned about it. 
And I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna start learning about it. And I started like learning about it. I didn't buy none until March, April is when I bought my first one. And that's when we started realizing, like, oh yeah, there's a lot of money to be made here, like that you yeah. can just get into. But then bought stuff that we just started holding. I just got stuck. Yeah, we just we just held it, bro. And we I didn't play the game. I got one potential one that can do well. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I got that's, not, that's the game. I got stuck holding it, man. I, I'm but, gonna be honest. But it's like if you have it. if you have a lot of capital, you can play with the, you know, the more you know, blue, the chip, blue ones, chip ones, and then or you can do the the getting mint. You can mint ones that are potentially blue chip, like pudgy penguins. If you have, we saw it at six hundred bucks. We could have bought it at six hundred, but I eventually could have flipped it for like thousands. Facts. And we saw it for like six hundred bucks. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. And at the, time, the at the time, at the time, that six hundred dollars was like, mm, I don't know if I want to put six hundred dollars into an NFT that a I don't picture, know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that was before everyone talked about it. That was now, Mark Cuban bought one. That was before you know. Yeah, I mean, hindsight Solana. 2020, looking at it, you're like, God those, damn, those I should have bought Solana? that. Those yep. DJ, DJ Apes? DJ Apes, yep. Those were ones, too. Yeah, if yeah. If you bought it, you could have flipped it for the thousands. Biggest, I think the biggest, like, mess up of the entire NFTs was that one Mechaverse. Oh, Bro. yeah, what happened to them? They they basically rugged. They had so much potential. Bro, they, their art was so dope, and people just wanted it because people like Gundam. They like that type of, you know, it was it would have been dope, bro. But they literally, they just took ran off with the money. Everybody was, and their mom was popping up NFTs, just popping them up, boom, boop, boop, boop. But that one by far, I think Mechaverse was the one that was just like, damn, really, bro? Like y'all really could have been, y'all could have been technically like a blue chip, but you just wanted to be greedy and take the money. And screw everyone who minted your NFTs. I don't even remember how much you minted for. Was it like three uh, ETH? How much was yeah, it? No, no, it was like point seven ETH or something. something like seven hundred dollars. It something. was. I remember. Damn. Because I was gonna sell some crypto to buy it. <laughs> yeah, it was I like was too. And then Mint Day came, and I was like, mm, nah. And then nope. two hours after Mint went live, everyone was talking oh, about when's reveal, when's reveal, and they're like, "Oh, sorry guys, blah blah blah." And then a week later, they were like, "When's reveal, when's reveal?" And then they finally revealed it, and then everybody had like the same looking ones, and it was just like, "Oh, cause that was terrible." But 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 not everyone lost money. Some people sold out in the beginning. They you know they did their they did the NFT game. You buy the NFT for six hundred dollars. You sell it for twelve hundred dollars on the hype, and before the reveal even happens, if you if you miss out on like a, a golden one or whatever, eh, I mean you're gonna be kind of pissed off, but whatever, man, it is what it is. But if you sell it from six hundred dollars to twelve hundred, and you got like a common one, then you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I came up, you know what I mean? And that's the NFT game that I missed out on. I thought that you had to buy it, wait for the reveal to hopefully be one of the lucky ones to get the top 1.1 percent and then try and sell it then which i mean you could do that too but i mean the game is really buying and selling it uh right away in my honest opinion but this article that john sent me buy it in time i thought this was pretty interesting he said a dow wants to buy blockbuster and turn it into a decentralized filming uh film streaming service that is pretty interesting a DAO like wants to buy Blockbuster? They're coming everywhere now. Bro, well, imagine Brock Blockbuster from back and like bringing Blockbuster back. Like all the old heads, like all the people in the baby boomer generation, they really they remember Blockbuster. We remember Blockbuster because we were on like the tail end of Blockbuster, mm-hmm. but and well, I mean we're not even that old, but still, I think I think people would come back to Blockbuster just on the nostalgia alone. And then, of course, with DAOs, if you can make money with it, I th- like imagine making money while watching movies. Like as long as you hold this particular token, whatever DAO token that is, yeah. you get to, you know, get a percentage off of your Blockbuster uh, subscription or yeah, you, they, you you make money while you're watching Blockbuster. Like I, it's they endless. Want, yeah, they want to they want to um, plan for uh, I read it earlier movie financing and production down the road but it's just cool because they're trying to buy a known brand right and it's a DAO, like a DAO is not like a ceo corporate it's a it's a group of people that's gonna make this thing profitable or for people who want to invest into it right it's a known name and it's something that happened recently over the weekend or whatever is radio shack they're launching a DeFi onboarding for the baby boomers 
Is it radio, yeah. isn't radio Shack owned by Ty Lopez? Yeah, I sent you the video of uh, Shaco JV. He made a really good video about it. He was losing his mind. He was like, look at this. Baby boomers have trillions of dollars. That's a lot of money that's tied up with baby boomers. That's going to flood into crypto. And Radio Shack's mission is to help them understand DeFi. Help them understand, hey, this is what crypto can do for you. And this is how I can make you money. That's yeah. Radio Shack's new mission. They're going to create an onboarding process for these baby boomers. And not just crypto, buying and selling tokens. They're talking about Freaking DeFi. Freaking Ty Lopez, man. DeFi. You should go to the website. I, I, I'll find it for you right now. Watch. Dude. Ty Lopez has come like when when everyone heard the news that Ty Lopez bought all those dead companies, everyone was like, "What the heck is he trying to do with it?" And I think that he bought those companies because of the names, and he didn't fully understand what he was going to do with yeah. it. And then when all of this DAOs and all this information about blockchain and da -da -da -da, token, NFTs, dude. he was like, "That's where I'm taking it. That's the new yeah, thing." And and uh, check it out, show it out. He's smart. He's he's, he's a genius, he's, man. He was one of the original people to introduce social media marketing as Bringing a business and a lifestyle. Hey, you can change your life with social understanding the game of social media and creating a business off of it. So now he's doing the same thing with crypto. All, all I do is get emails from him about crypto. I'm like, dude, I don't need your help. He'll be like, oh, do you need help with crypto? So. He's literally right there. How will we make this bridge? Radio Shack DeFi will start with a token swap. We believe this is the lowest hanging fruit among many DeFi opportunities. Our symb symbiosis with Atlas USV will allow us to offer the most efficient and competitive swap on the market. So they're creating a swap. They're literally teaching people how to get into crypto, but they're targeting baby boomers. And his vision, I can see it. His vision is Radio Shack being like, like a Binance like uh ethereum like uh you know what i'm saying but it's a brand that people know so now think about it people are gonna see radio shack as a oh it's a big player in crypto oh it's like a microsoft oh it's like an amazon because remember amazon started out selling books yeah microsoft was just a computer yep. now they have you know the, well the software but they have so much more right microsoft is so much more so much more you got apple Apple was just the, P, the 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 computer. Now it's the software, it's the phone, it's the music. Cars coming, VR coming. But they're creating a wow. ecosystem to bring boomers into crypto in an efficient way and it's with the name that they trust. Yeah, Radio Shack is the name you trust for sure. And and that's insane. It's, it's not like with the swap first. It's not like they're like look at this for a second. It's not like they're starting they're doing some something revolutionary. It's it's a swap, you know what I'm saying? Sushi swap, pancake swap, it's all type of swaps. You can look at a swap and know how to use it if you've been in crypto for a while. But it's baby boomers for, yeah. won't know how to use it. They're going looking at that, they're going to be like Okay, that's what very heck? simple though. What do I do? <laughs> but that's why Radio Shack is supposed to teach them all that. Yeah, and then if you sign up or give you their email, yeah. or whatever, they will. I'm sure because you know, knowing Ty Lopez, bro, he will give you step by step. This week yeah. is this. This week is this. This week is this. And then he did it with social media marketing with the younger generation. Now exactly. he's starting the older generation. Look, his thing says Radio Shack is a hundred year old brand embedded into the global consciousness. And we are going to lead the way for blockchain technology to reach mainstream adoption by other large brands. So he's going to help other companies, other brands, older CEOs, investors. This is just bullish for me in my mind because mainstream adoption, that's the same thing. When we started this channel, that was one of the main things that we said. The underlying DNA of our show is to allow people to realize, hey, mainstream adoption is coming. It's here, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's coming, it's, rather, it's, yeah. Well, back then, it was yeah. coming. Now it's here. Yeah. But that was like, hey, as long as we have that same, we echo that, and those are the type of news articles that we used to want to show. Hey, we're only showing news articles that make you guys understand, hey, you're not blowing your money investing into crypto. Don't worry about things going red because this is not where it's going to end. <laughs> Quant will be $10,000. EXD <laughs> will be hundreds of dollars. Alliance Block will be hundreds of dollars. Like, this is not financial advice, but this is crypto advice entertainment purposes. There we but go. But that was our message. Stop thinking so small. That's what we we're trying to say. All these YouTubers, when we came in, they're looking at literally token by token basis, one token at a time, which is fine. You yeah. can do that your damn self. Why do you need to listen to somebody tell you what token is to buy? 
We're trying to tell you there's thousands of tokens, but obviously only a certain few will win. But you need to understand when you invest, you need to be investing with confidence. Yeah. And what we're doing is showing you, you have to have confidence and having confidence is showing that the world is looking at crypto more so than ever before in the history of the life of crypto from Bitcoin's age of inception, right? Day of inception. Yeah. To today, it's more eyes than ever in history in the crypto space ever before. We're entering 2022. We literally have no idea what 2022 is going to be. But nope. going into 2021, no one knew either. 2020, you would have been rich this year if you had invested into crypto all of 2020. If you started the this January of 2020 before the pandemic, oh, I don't want to say the word. You could say pandemic though. Pandemic started all the way investing all the way to the end of the year. You would have been rich in 2021 and you would have been retired. You would have been good to go. I think you would be retired in 2022, but you would be rich in 2020. Well, around now, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I looked at all the 2020 prices. Ethereum was 200 bucks. Quant was a dollar. VXV was a couple cents or a dollar, whatever. A few cents. Cadena was a couple cents. Yep. You got Alliance Block, a couple cents. DAG, less than a penny. V Ching, less than a penny. H Bar, three cents. Less than, less than a penny, too. There's so many of them. Polygon, Telcoin. You would have been rich off Telcoin off the jump beginning of the yeah. year. Telcoin, yeah, Telcoin made a lot of millionaires. Cardano, Cardano Luna, was, technically yeah, as Luna, well. Luna, Avalanche, Cardano, Avalanche. Cardano God, was um, um, thirteen cents. Binance was like twenty eight bucks, thirty bucks, or something like that. Like pancake swap yeah. prices, yeah. There's so many you could just you could name them all, right? Dogecoin alone would made you rich. It was under under the it was like zero zero two. It was like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. bought it kind of late, but still early. Yeah, we were in right. fourth we fence. Yeah. I mean, that's when the Dogecoin millionaire bought yeah, it too. That's people bought it under. He just had a bunch of cash, you know. You know what I'm saying? People buy it under a penny. When you put in a hundred dollars, you're getting like thirty thousand tokens off rip, just off a of hundred bucks back then. Yeah, it would, be, it would be a lot more, but yeah, I feel you. But you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm just yeah, throwing yeah. numbers, but that's what I'm saying. If you had invested all in 2020, 2020, we've been rich, but 2021 is where it was like, whoa, everyone woke up because the bear market came, and then that's when all you be, you you would have been rich because of the the hype that. 2021 brought in yeah so now knowing that well 2021 did this we're going into 2022 it can be the complete opposite but either way 2021 showed us crypto is here to stay for the long run in 2022 you can take advantage of if there's a bear market or a crash or you just keep buying well well the thing <laughs> the thing is about Regardless. 2022 though excuse me is it's going to be more mainstream this Radio Shack, this implementing of the cryptocurrency stuff, I don't think will happen like today, tomorrow, next month, whatever. Yeah, it's gonna, it's this, is, this is in a process. So it could be mid month, uh, mid um, mid year, mid year 2022. But if you have the understanding that this is coming, you can already be like, OK, potentially I can double my money, if not 4x my money, possibly 10x my money on whatever comes from this Radio Shack thing. You know, that's how you got to look too. at it. They're releasing a token. You're not looking at it to hold this thing. You're not, oh, I'm going to hold Radio Shack token. No, you're not holding Radio Shack token. We already know the the, the blue chips that you want to hold. Those are going to be your long-term hold. Whatever that is for you. I'm not going to tell you what you to might, get. Boomers might hold this, though. Boomers might hold it, but that's because they don't understand. They're going to be what everyone else was doing back then, just buying every single crypto that they like and diamond handing it. And hoping that the price will go These up to guys, what they think it's going to be. They're going to have the most money though than real retail investors. That's true. These are the people that are going to have. There's trillions of dollars. But does that tell? But does that tell you that the price? That only tells you that the price will be stable and it won't be so volatile because people are not going to be buying and selling as yeah. much. So you know the price will rocket because all the money is going to come in because the baby boomers yeah. have all this money. But the price will also stay stable. So. These, these are know. the people that have houses. These are the people, these are the grandpas, grandmas that have houses, that have the nice cars. They're the ones that you drive through the neighborhood like, dang, I wonder what they did to get that. These are the people that have probably hundreds of thousand dollars in, in, in 401k savings, retirement yeah. funds. Yep. These are the business owners that have a million dollar business that just like, oh, I don't want to retire already. These are the people that have, they have a lot of money. They were in the golden era of the 50s, 40, right? The 40s, the 50s, right? 60s, or, yeah. 60s, yeah. These are people after the 
the war, right? They were born. Yeah, 60s, 70s. These are the people that were capitalized on that, bought houses, bought real estate. These are the people that have a lot of money. They were able to start the earlier businesses. They invested in the earlier businesses as well before they came to fruition, fruition today. Yeah. So they have a lot of capital. They're not, they're not dumb in a sense of like how to make money. They're just, I guess, dumber in a sense of like the technology that, that that's coming. And there's probably going to be some that are very innovative thinking. Oh, I'm, I'm with this. I like this. Someone's radio shack can teach me how to do this. Perfect. And that's why I read here. He says, this is the, there is a real generational gap between the average crypto buyer and the average business decision maker. Facts. The demo, this demographic difference creates a substantial psychological bar barrier to crypto adoption. Radio Shack DeFi will be the bridge between the CEOs who lead the world's corporations and the new world of cryptocurrencies. So basically, we are heading into a year, 2022, that, and beyond, that's really. never been seen before in history. This you can't look back. 2017, this happened. 2018, this happened. 2019, you know, no, no, no. we're going into a place where we have no idea what's going to happen, and you just got to buckle in your seatbelt. And then, if you are an expert in the space where you understand tokenomics, you understand the nature of the beast, you respect the space, you will be fine. You will be able to weed through the BS and make safe investments for yourself. Yeah, with the i with the thought that. Even if there's a my one of my tokens falls tremendously, crashes tremendously, depending on why it crashed. If the whole market's crashing, then then it has to be some type of manipulation, some type of fud, whatever you know. But at the end of the day, it will rise again because crypto's here to stay. Nothing's gonna go to zero zero. Like there's gonna be tokens that go to zero, but that depends. That depends on on you doing your your research. Yeah, and being coming an expert, understanding okay, this token has no partnership. This token will not be survive if it goes down to zero. Okay, this token has Google backing it. Oh, this token is working with this token that will back it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that's not even including. That's, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's not even including regulation happening or getting some form of clarity and understanding once the XRP lawsuit is over. That's 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 the whole other thing that we even touch on. You know what I'm saying? So. It's going to be think, interesting in the next couple of years. Yeah, man. next couple of years are going to be even big because I think the, for sure, governors, mayors, presidents, they're going to put crypto in their agenda. You know how, like, yeah. in history, the the main thing was crime, um, taxes when they run. What do you do for our taxes? What do you do for jobs? What do yeah. you do about crime? What do you do about drugs? What do you do about um, um, equality? You know, they had, you know, like all Marriage, that Marriage, all that. Yeah, yeah. everything, everything. You have they have the peasants and the governors and the mayors, senators, they have representatives, they have to touch on all those things so you can vote for them. Whether or not they do it or don't, they have to cater to you, right? Technology, right. whatever. Like, oh, are you are you internet friendly? Are you like are you gonna lower taxes? Are you a guy that's gonna lower taxes or raise taxes? Right? Florida looks like they know what they're doing. Oh, we want to yeah. make a token where yeah. you guys don't have to worry about paying taxes. That token's gonna supply money for the city, right? And people are gonna copy that. Or are you are you like for a marijuana friendly? Are you this friendly? Are you you know what I mean? Yeah. Crypto will be part of the new agenda. Presidents, senators, all of them, they're gonna have it to they're gonna be asked, are you crypto friend? Are you pro crypto? Or 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 you know? Yeah. I I, I completely agree. Or against man. crypto. Oh, I love crypto. I definitely oh. appreciate. It. Most Imagine of them the one have that, it though. Let's be honest. Most of them have yeah, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Not all of them. There's only two. Right. Two. There's only two senators. There's a lot of representatives in the House of Representatives that have crypto. Right. But there's only two That's senators I mean. that have crypto. Loomis and Toomey. I mean, a majority of them are going to get in once they have some understanding, some clarity. But I think once the ETFs start rolling out, then a bunch of them are going to because they're already yeah. in the stock market. So it only makes sense. Like, OK, I don't I don't feel comfortable with this cryptocurrency thing yet. So I'm going to go into this ETF and get a derivative of it and, you know, kind of get my foot in the door. I think they're going to go that route in the beginning. But once once the lawsuit is over, man, it's like it's going to turn more into the wild, wild west because now. Everyone's going to be trying to get in everywhere, wherever they can. Just 
Oh, I want this. I want that. You, you're gonna see. So, you're gonna see so many prices just go. We'll boom. see. I feel in the lawsuit and XRP will benefit, but it'll take a while for all. Well, not necessarily things. just XRP. I'm more so talking about the entire crypto space. No, not, no, no, not I mean, just XRP. I, I know. I'm saying. I'm saying the XRP will benefit. I don't know if that's gonna. It'll take a while for it to resonate with the rest of the crypto space in regards of what that meant, what what the the resulting decision means for the crypto space. I think it's gonna take a little while. For people to realize, like, yo, XRP not being a security is big, right? But it's not going to be instant. Right. I think it's going to be a very, very juicy pump and dump. Because there's people that have been holding XRP for a long well, time. Well, by the, by the room and sell the news. Just for XRP. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of the space. I don't know if the, the, the lawsuits, what it's going to do for the rest of the crypto space initially. But the, the Ripple lawsuit will be big, huge news. It'll be everywhere. Twitter. Because the, XR, the XRP family army is huge. XP family is huge. Yeah. Huge. That's well, it'll that's, be everywhere. That's gonna be Instagram, on the mainstream Twitter. news as well, though. Yeah, mainstream it has news. Because it has Twitter, SEC with it. TikTok, Facebook. It'll be ev- it'll flood the whole world. XRP one. Ripple one. It'll be the biggest crypto news for a few days. I just don't know how it's gonna play with the rest of the market. I know XRP will be bullish. It'll be green light. Let's Bitcoin's go. Bitcoin's gonna be green light. I think even more so. I don't know because now because think about it, the mainstream media is going to be pushing out this because it, the SEC has its uh, name attached to it, so they're going to spin it to where the SEC looks good, and and then they're going to be like, okay, well, if that's the case, what about Bitcoin? What about Ethereum? They already got what their about pass. This? You know what I'm saying? But they're going to start talking and asking those questions. And then they start bringing on analysts, quote unquote. And they'll be like, where's all these analysts been this whole time? They're doing it now. The analysts have been doing it. The Charles Gasparino is one of the main ones. And then Brian Brooks brought it up too. There's a couple of them. They're doing it now. They talk about the lawsuit. And the lawsuit is getting more attention now. Right. And that's the issue right now is why is Bitcoin and Ethereum have a on a green light pass. Why do they have the hall pass? Yeah. Well, that that, that that's, that's going to be spoke about. That, that's what's going to be uh, looked at in the future as, you know, when that lawsuit and all that stuff gets uh, subsides and all that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just excited. I mean, I'm this year is going to be amazing. 2022 is going to be amazing. Yeah. Keep buying. Keep keep your head in the game. Don't uh, I want to look at it. You do that, you you it's it's too hard to to keep up. It's just too hard to keep up and I'm you know, I'm in it every day. So you have to be. You have to be. And that's you irregardless have to, you of have to, us doing have, this show every day. You have to pay attention. Fact. You can't not pay attention. You can't, uh, you gotta look at the market. You gotta look, see what Bitcoin is. You gotta look at the over market cap. You gotta look up some news every day. You gotta, you gotta go on Twitter, search it around a little bit. What's going on? What's going on? What's, what's the market like? You have to. Yeah. Because you will miss out. You will. Something will happen. You, you just got to stay. You got to keep your brain fresh on it because it's easy to lapse. And especially around this time of the year, I noticed a lot of people will take the rest of the year off and it can really mess with you because you just say, oh, okay, I'll start back up next year. Oh, I'll take the rest of the year. And your family's around. It's easy. It'll be very easy just to just build some really bad habits the last two weeks of the year. It's really easy. I've seen it firsthand. It almost happened. It's it almost happened to me. I noticed it this whole week, right? I was like in and out, in and out, in and out, and I started realizing, like, whoa, I can't do this. Like, this is not good. Yeah, you can easily fall into a trap this time of year, buying gifts, getting gifts, and then getting euphoric, getting happy, relaxed. I had a good year, <sighs> and then you're building, you're bringing that energy into the new year. Yeah, but then the new year, they're gonna try and. But then you change that, it. That's not that's not that's not that's not consistency. That's not how you gotta nope discipline. Cause you gotta okay, back on twenty seventh. All right, well, it's just another day. Let's get to work. Exactly. And then you go and then you you know what I'm saying, going into the new year, like, all right, let's get it popping. Like it's just another it's just another day. It's just another day. It's another day, another date. We created time. Time's not real anyway. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just so hey man, you said it best. I don't need to add anything on to that. I think you did an amazing job explaining it. Hopefully you guys actually really listened to that. And if you didn't, didn't, rewind it and they re-listen didn't. to it again, man, because that is some alpha that probably went on seventy over uh seventy percent of you guys' heads. So definitely go ahead, rewind that and listen to it again. 
And while you're at it, <laughs> subscribe to the channel, man. Subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to the channel because we're we're gonna be we're gonna be stepping it up. These kind of conversations is only gonna get bigger, better next year. Whole bunch more of stuff guests, coming, man. More, Whole bunch yeah, of stuff. We got more guests, more people. We're gonna travel. No, I'm just counting over travel. That'd be cool. If we do travel. We could. We, you know, we and could. Then, and then, like, do a show we don't even road. know, but it's gonna be dope. You know, we, we might even start vlogging some stuff. I don't, you know, what I'm saying I'm just throwing some stuff out there. But you got to be subscribed. You got to hit that bell notification so you stay notified whenever we post anything new. Like the video, of course. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Take care. God bless. Be safe. Peace out.